Previously on Stranger Things. The season opens with Mike, Dustin, Lucas and Will playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons and offending off a monster they call the Demeter. However, on his way home, Will faces a monster of his own and is abducted. The next morning, Will's mum Joyce and his brother John realise he's not there and start to panic. At school, the boys also realise Will is missing while being bullied by a couple of mouth breathers. We then meet Mike's sister Nancy and her best friend Barb, who's concerned about Nancy's new relationship with the school heartthrob Steve. We're introduced to the local sheriff Jim Hopper, who Joyce talks to about Will's disappearance. Meanwhile, a local government facility is suiting up and venturing into an alien-looking gateway and we learn that a young girl recently escaped the facility. Her name is Eleven. Eleven sneaks into a nearby diner for something to eat and makes friends with the owner of the establishment. We learn that Eleven has special abilities before the owner is murdered and Eleven escapes once again. The boys are told not to go looking for their friend as the search escalates. Joyce receives a shocking phone call from Will and the boys go looking for Will despite their warning but come across Eleven instead. They take Eleven home to Mike's house where she sleeps the night in the basement. Mike learns of the bad men coming after Eleven and Eleven learns the basics of modern life before recognising Will in one of Mike's pictures. In a flashback we're shown the awful test that Eleven has been put through because of her powers and the leader of the operation Dr Brenner is seen as her fatherly figure who she calls Papa. The boys then learn of Eleven's powers as Hopper continues searching for Will who Eleven explains is in a place known as the Upside Down being held prisoner by the devil. Elsewhere, Nancy and Barb attend a party at Steve's parents' house, which Barb does not approve of. Nancy then ditches Barb before she is photographed by Jonathan and disappears into the night. Joyce receives shocking phone call number two and discovers that Will is talking to her through the electricity, and let's just say her household gets pretty lit. Hopper starts investigating the government facility and Nancy realises that Barb is missing. Joyce, meanwhile, makes progress contacting Will before the demogorgon reveals himself to her. Hopper discovers the facility is caught up in multiple lawsuits but all hope is soon lost when Will's dead body is left. However, Eleven manages to tune into Will's scene and Mike's walkie-talkie. Joyce and Jonathan identify Will's body but Joyce refuses to believe the corpse is her son. The police start looking into Barb's disappearance and Nancy and Jonathan admit to each other that they saw a faceless creature the night Barb vanished. The boys prepare Eleven to be taken out in public and they all attend a school assembly for Will, where Eleven teaches the mouth breathers a lesson. Hopper starts to connect the dots and discovers Will's body is a fake. He breaks into the facility and discovers what is really going down there, then suddenly wakes up in his house where he finds a bug in his life fixture. Nancy and Jonathan go looking for the faceless creature and the kids go looking for the entrance to the Upside Down, which Eleven stops them from finding for their own safety. Nancy finds the entrance before confronting the devil and is saved by Jonathan who Stephen is getting jealous of. After sabotaging the boys' plan, Eleven runs away and steals some Eggos, which is her favourite food, from a local grocery store. Hopper confirms Joyce's suspicions and they talk to a severely disabled woman who lost her daughter to the government facility. Nancy and Jonathan equip themselves to fight the Demogorgon before Jonathan is arrested for fighting Steve. Hopper and Joyce then team up with Nancy and Jonathan as they are looking for the same enemy. The boys have an encounter with their bullies which causes Mike to jump off a cliff. However, he is saved by Eleven who returns and breaks the bully's arm. However, the bad men track down the children who are now on the run and Eleven saves the day again by flipping one of their vans. Steve ends up being one of the good guys and Hopper finds the kids. Eleven tries to communicate with Will to no avail, however she thinks she could do it if her senses were blocked out and she was submerged in water. She then finds Barb's dead body and encourages Will to hold on a little longer. Meanwhile, Hopper and Joyce break into the facility to find Will before they are captured by security. Hopper then makes a deal with them to allow Joyce and him into the Upside Down. While in there, we see flashbacks of Hopper's daughter who died of cancer at a young age. Nancy, Jonathan and Steve lure the Demogorgon to the house and try to trap him, but fail. Mike confesses his truth to Eleven before the bad men arrive to take her away, but are interrupted by the Demogorgon who kills them all. Joyce finds Will on the brink of death, but Hopper resuscitates him. Eleven grows weak, but uses her last ounce of strength to disintegrate the Demogorgon, taking her with him. Will recovers in hospital and Hopper is seen getting into a government vehicle. One month later and we again see the boys playing but Mike still misses Eleven. Nancy ends up back with Steve and Will is still suffering from his experience in the Upside Down. Hopper is then seen with the in the woods.
We're first introduced to a girl who can make people see what she wants them to see, and she reveals a tattoo just like Eleven's. Mike, Dustin, Lucas and Will head down to their local arcade where they find a player named Mad Max has beaten their high score in Dig Dug, when suddenly Will experiences the upside down and witnesses something emerging in the sky before snapping out of his trance. Popper is back at work and being tested by a local conspiracy theorist who is starting to piece things together regarding Eleven and the facility, but Hopper dismisses him to look into a local farmer's pumpkin patch that's been poisoned. We're introduced to Billy and his younger sister Max, who the boys discover is the notorious Mad Max who beat their high school. Joyce has a new boyfriend named Bob and is trying to get some answers about what the recent episodes of the Upside Down. Dr. Owens is more specialist who also supervises the main of the Upside Down Day, preventing it from spreading. Nancy and Steve visit Bob's parents' house who just hired a private investigator to help find their daughter, which overwhelms Nancy with guilt. Jonathan tries to cheer Will up before he has another episode and witnesses the Shadow Monster. Popper retreats to a cabin in the woods where he and Eleven are currently residing. Eleven escaped the Upside Down and now Popper won't let her leave the cabin in order to keep her safe. Joyce discovers Will's drawings and alerts Popper, who is the only person she can trust. The boys are the only ones that dress up for Halloween but try to enlist Max into their group. We learn that her brother is bad news and he threatens to run the boys over with his car. Popper looks further into the poison crops in the area and finds a pattern. Joyce and Bob fantasise about moving away to escape these events and Nancy confesses to Steve that their relationship is bullshit. Meanwhile, Eleven finds a way to communicate with Mike and Dustin finds a little creature in his trash and calls him Dart. Not sure what it is, Dustin starts doing some research. Bob tells Will to stand up to the monsters that haunt him and while one relationship blossoms, another ends. Tired of being cooped up in the cabin, Eleven leaves in search of Mike and the gang who are trying to figure out what Dart is. Will recognises it from the upside down and the group decide to destroy it, but Dustin has other ideas. Eleven finds Mike and thinks he's falling for Max, so she makes Max fall instead. Eleven has a meltdown, Will gets possessed, and Jonathan and Nancy decide to meet up with Barb's parents and tell them the truth. Little do they know they're being watched and they're taken to the facility where they're warned against telling anyone about the town's impending doom. The shadow monster starts taking over Will's body and he starts drawing some sort of a map. Eleven finds newspaper clippings of a woman that is likely her mother, so she tries to communicate with her and learns her own real name. Nancy and Jonathan skip town in search of answers and Dart eats the family cat. Hopper discovers the cause of the crop poisoning, some upside down tunnels which try to consume it. Dart gets pucked and Eleven goes looking for her mother and finds she is traumatised by the events that separated the two of them. Nancy and Jonathan meet up with the conspiracy theorists and they help each other fill in the blanks. Bob helps Joyce find Hopper and Will starts feeling the damage the facility is causing to the gateway. Dustin teams up with Steve to help kill Dart but he's already escaped into the tunnels. Joyce gets fired up and so do John and Nancy. Hopper recovers after his experience and is shown the full scale of the upside down tunnels. The gang meet up at the junkyard to take care of these demo dogs and Steve saves the day. The monster inside Will ambushes the workers in the tunnels and Eleven learns of a long lost sister who was raised in the facility with her. Carly, aka Eight, and the gang of vigilantes who spend their time serving justice to those who have wronged them. Eight trains Eleven to become more powerful and gives her a bitchin' makeover. Eleven joins the dark side but remembers that her friends need her and returns to Hawkins. The demo dogs infiltrate the facility and our heroes are trapped inside. We learn why Billy is the way that he is and Nancy and Jonathan return to help out back at the facility. Bob sacrifices himself so the rest can escape and Justin points out that the shadow monster displays traits of a mind flight, which means that all of 